In this video, we want to talk about what determines price elasticity of demand. Really five things that we think about when we think about price elasticity of demand, whether or not there are close substitutes, the passage of time, whether it's a luxury or a necessity, the definition of the market, and the share of the budget. Uh, let's talk about the, the first item, close substitutes. Uh, a Butterfinger has got lots of close substitutes. Therefore, the elasticity is probably going to be sig significantly larger than one. Lots of different substitutes. Cigarettes, on the other hand, very inelastic. Not a lot of close substitutes for a cigarette. The passage of time will also determine how elastic uh, a product or a service is. The more time you have to find something, uh, or as time passes, the more elastic uh, the demand for that product is going to be. Um, the third item would be whether or not the item is a luxury or a necessity. An item that's a luxury, uh, generally uh, the price is sensitive to, uh, to uh, uh, the demand is sensitive to price. Therefore, the uh, price elasticity would be fairly elastic. On the other hand, uh, an item that is considered a necessity, I would consider shoes a necessity. The elasticity of shoes would be fairly inelastic. The fourth item is the definition of the market. Uh, if we think about Rexburg, how many choices we have for gasoline, uh, four or five different um, sources for gasoline, the uh, value would be fairly uh, elastic. Uh, in contrast, our demand for gasoline in general is fairly inelastic. Um, so if we define the market to be a fairly small area, it's inelastic, excuse me, it's elastic. And if it's a large uh, market area, uh, the demand would be inelastic. So demand for gasoline in Rexburg, elastic. The demand for gasoline in general, inelastic. And the last item is how much of a share of your budget that item represents. Uh, we buy salt uh, frequently. Uh, can you remember the price that you paid for salt the last time you purchased a carton of salt? Probably not because it represented such a small portion of your budget. On the other hand, you probably know fairly well what you paid for rent since it represents such a large share of your budget. If an item represents a small share of your budget, uh, it's fairly inelastic. In other words, the price of salt could probably double from, say, a dollar a cart to two dollars a cart, and you wouldn't notice it much because it represents such a small share of your budget. On the other hand, uh, if the price of your apartment doubled, you would notice it very much and you would be looking for lots and lots of alternatives if that uh, price were to increase significantly. Therefore, the uh, share of the budget uh, with large items generally tends to be much more elastic. So those are the items that determine uh, price elasticity.